Hello, I'm Tocat and welcome back to another second channel video. Today I figured I could help explain some of the weird systems and traditions in place in the United Kingdom, given that a lot of people are asking about these things because we have our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, being the first major world leader not only to catch COVID-19, but also the first to be hospitalized as a result. He's not only hospitalized, but he's in intensive care, and obviously the odds of survival or whatever, like these are things you could work out. It's going to be different for a Prime Minister, you might assume, um, but let's just say there are two doors right now, there is life and there is death, and a lot of people wonder what happens behind the door of death. A sitting Prime Minister hasn't died in the UK in a very long time, and unlike in, say, the United States, where you can, you know, the, the line of secession is very clear, everyone knows it, you can even find terrible uh, news articles, you know the form where it's a different thing on each page, but you can find terrible news articles explaining like, oh yeah, it's the Vice President, then it's the Speaker of the House, then President Pro Tempore, and it goes all the way down the line, everyone knows what happens if the, pre if the President dies, and even if the next 15 or 16 or 17 people die, um, it's very well uh, listed out there, so therefore what happens in the UK. You might assume, given that there is now, uh, you know, the Foreign Secretary, uh, you know, Dominic Roth, who has been deputised, they're like, oh yeah, there's a Deputy Prime Minister, that's a thing, and he must be like the Vice President, but in the parliamentary system, and it's an easy assumption to make, given that right now, uh, you know, he is basically, uh, the Foreign Secretary was the first Secretary of State, arguably the second office in the government, is taking over temporarily. That's actually not how it works if a Prime Minister dies. Also, just as a fun fact, the Deputy Prime Minister isn't a role that really exists in the UK. Like, it has existed, don't get me wrong. There have been eight Deputy Prime Ministers, but they've mostly been when there's been a coalition of some form, or like there's been uh, internal uh, opposition from parties. You can see how it's been abolished several times, and it's only, we've only had eight of them, is what I'm trying to say right here, including, uh, and, and that includes the fact that the last four years, we haven't had a Deputy Prime Minister. And before before that, it was only because of a coalition. So long story short, deputy prime ministers don't really exist, and if the prime minister dies, you don't get the deputy prime minister because the prime minister is not a directly, uh, you know, elected position. You vote for parties which have a prime minister, you know, a potential prime minister, of course, but that is not something that stays in place, and that is not precisely how that works. So yeah, this is a really interesting story because it brings that up as a whole thing. Like yeah, UK system's different. It's also worth noting just before we leave this that like yes, a really key thing to keep in mind here is that this uh, reminds you that. People, you know, like you having a oh wait, it is a great uh, one. Power is no protection from harm. No matter who you are, even if you are prime minister, arguably the most powerful person in the UK, right? Even if you are prime minister, that is still not how this one goes for you. And uh, yeah, therefore, like, okay, let's start, go dive into like, okay, well, who was the last prime minister to die? The the last example of a prime minister to die very shortly after leaving office was Andrew Bonar Law. Yes, that really is a prime minister of the UK called Bonar Law. He was born in Canada, which is kind of wacky, although it's a British colony at the time. But like. He he was one in Canada, um, he was one of the shortest lived Prime Ministers that's ever existed, and he resigned and then died a year later because of health reasons. So it's one of the weirdest, like, Prime Ministers, like, literally less than a year in office, which is a, uh, a weird uh, sister, uh, part of the UK system, I guess. Um, he's known as the Unknown Prime Minister, and arguably some of the things he did was were pretty bad despite only being around for less than a year. But that is Andrew Bonar Law, again, I mean, just... Like, that name, are we just going to not talk about it? I guess not. But let's talk about the last Prime Minister to actually die, because it was Henry John Temple, the third Viscount of Palmerston. It is such a um, wacky thing that, like, yeah, to go in the UK system, you have to go to the time when we had the Viscount of Palmerston in, uh, you know, charge. But yeah, this was the last Prime Minister to die while in office. And you might question, therefore, like, so what happened? I mean, he died in 1865, by the way. That is, again, it's, it's quite some time away, you could say. I mean... Uh, I think that is, uh, you know, objectively speaking, just facts, right? Um, he's a really interesting guy, by the way. I really recommend Leap reading into him because I just thought it'd be like, uh, oh yeah, he died in office. He must have had a short-lived term too. This guy was like in some form of politics his whole life. He was, you know, he became a Irish peer in 1802, but he was in some form of office till 1865. It is wacky to read into his career as foreign secretary. He did some wildly weird things of liberal interventionism. But anyway, we'll leave that beside and just say like, okay, what happened when he died? Because, you know, even the royal, you know, or even the royal family has like a line of secession, but there is no line of secession for the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is a position that exists as a result of an elected body. It is a, you know, kind of side product of that. And therefore what happens is when the Prime Minister dies, uh, there is a brand new election. Not a general election, uh, mind you, because bear in mind that Boris Johnson himself even did not come to power after a general election. He did win one back in December, but he came into power before that because of a result of the 2019 Conservative Party leadership election. That's right, when the sitting Prime Minister dies, or in this case, resigns, which is the far more common outcome in, uh, you know, 20, uh, you know, 20, but when the sitting Prime Minister is no longer a sitting Prime Minister, the majority party, or the largest coalition of parties, or whatever, you know, particular grouping, they can decide on the next leader. It's 
Uh, you know, really, the party leader just happens to be prime minister. You vote for the party, not the prime minister. And as a result of that, you know, we don't have a president. That's not a system we've ever had in the UK. As a result, what happens is there's an election. And fun fact, uh, because it's weird that this is such a big question, given that the last, uh, you know, three of the last four uh, leaders have all come through the same system, because Theresa May, who was the obvious... Um, so the obviously predecessor to Boris Johnson, she also won as a result of a Conservative Party leadership election. The Prime Minister before him, David Cameron, was elected for the first time, but the Prime Minister before that, Gordon Brown, was, I mean, elected. I mean, un unopposed is a bit of a, a weird thing to say, but like, uh, it's it's worth mentioning that of course the um, you know like the the leader of a you know party is a internal party matter. It's just that le leader of the party then becomes Prime Minister of the country, and that means that what happens if there is a death is there has to be a leadership election for 2020, right? There is going to be a brand new election where the Conservative Party members, again, the current largest party, would decide the next Prime Minister. And it always seems kind of weird when you say on that level, like, wait, so are you saying that if this guy dies, then there is no election to do it? Um, you know, it's like, also breaking. PM has been stable overnight. There you go. That's good news. That's, that's the odds increasing, you could assume. But like, um, the thing is, when you look at this story um, and you see it this way, it does seem like, wait, so in the UK, for realsies, when your guy dies, you don't get a choice on the next one, you just get to deal with whoever takes over the party. And that is because, again, in the UK, our system is much more based on electing a representative, and then those representatives make a group and they decide the Prime Minister. It's very much indirect democracy and has always been, and it's kind of worked until this point. It's just, every time this comes up, it becomes the question of like, wait, so there's there's a guy who comes into power, well, or, you know, or in, you know, a girl who comes into power without even having to like, isn't that a bit weird? Is and and that's just that's just the UK system. I guess this is some way to explain it. So if there is a new prime minister elected, which again, I mean, it looks like odds are maybe not right. Um, but like if there if that small chance happens, we have the first major world leader death uh, for quite some time, especially in the middle of a pandemic, um, would be quite the historic event, of course. But if that does happen, then there has to be a new prime minister. They'll be elected. And one of the first things they have to do, I love this is just a, a little side thing. Whenever there is a new leader of the UK, one of the things we have to do, because, uh, you know, unlike... A lot of countries have different systems. Ours are the letters of last resort that our Prime Minister has to sign as one of their first duties in office. It is a handwritten letter from the Prime Minister to the commanding officer of each of Trident submarines. Trident is the UK's uh, nuclear submarines. And basically, they stay underwater in hidden locations all the time. But how do we send the messages, especially given that we might die? Well, if they work out that civilization has ended, one of the things they do to check is to see if uh, BBC Radio 4 is broadcasting, which I find hilarious because, I mean, they were on... They were on patrol because Radio 4 went down in 2004, which, you know, maybe a faulty system, but, you know, Radio 4 is our, is our guideline on whether the... <laughs> <laughs> guideline on whether UK civilization exists. But long story short, um, you have to send them a message and that message can go a few ways. You can say, hey, retaliate brutally against whoever did this to us. You can obviously do nothing, which is the kind of like, uh, it, it's basically like nuclear retaliation. It's not known by anyone besides um, the prime minister. And if they have to unlock the box, uh, you know, like, because again, if, if people die, they unlock a box, they get a letter, they read it, and they're like, oh, guess we're nuking, insert country here. So yeah, it's like one of those um, weird things about the UK, where at any point in time, we could have a message to nuke you back. But one of the things I, I really like is that, uh, according to this, in an interview of BBC, ex-Prime Ministers Gordon Brown, Tony Blair, and John Major all said that in no circumstances should nuclear weapons be deployed against civilian targets. Basically, military-only retaliation. And um, late Jim Gall Callaghan, who is a quite fascinating one, said that if we got to the point where I felt it was necessary to do it, then I would have done it. And I like that as the response a bit more. Like, you've got to play your hand and pretend like, yeah, maybe I maybe I do want to nuke all those civilians as just like a deterrent, I guess, while also probably writing in your letter like, ah, I don't know about that. Let's just send them to find like an allied country. Let them, you know, like, let someone else make that decision rather than a letter written several years ago. But yeah, so what is happening in the UK right now? Long story short, um, the Prime Minister is going through some stuff, and there's a lot of, like, little side tangents from here that I've wanted to dive into, like, man, Andrew Bernalore is a weird Prime Minister. Man, the Viscount Henry John Temple is a weird Prime Minister. But the point I'm just trying to make is that the UK system is weird, and I hope that this video helped decipher some of it for you. We don't have a President, we have a Prime Minister. There is no Vice Prime Minister or Deputy Prime Minister, except for the, the few weird times that there are. Anyway, thank you for watching. We're about to hit 10 minutes. We're going to do that thing where we did really cut up just before, just to show that I don't need no ad revenue, even though right now we do. Oh, damn, that was a whole thing I was going to mention. Like, oh, yeah, ad rates are kind of plummeting. But anyway, goodbye, friends.